So we can see it, it's behind the scapula. So in this region somewhere, it's not here, it's tucked under the scapula. And then it becomes another muscle, longissimus. But just for longissimus dorsi, here, under the scapula. Now, you palpate it because it doesn't cross the dorsal spine spinous processes, but it's, you can palpate on him quite well, and it's about here. So approximately, in most horses you'll find it's about two inches from, or four centimeters from the uh, dorsal spinous process, or from the edge, lateral edge. It's really important to do this when you're learning anatomy because what is being set up for now is that when you're assessing where the panels go on the saddle, which we've just touched on that, and locating longissimus from the textbook, you know it's not doesn't join right up to the dorsal spinous processes at all. So you have to leave some clearance there before it starts. So it's really good to get the textbook, get a horse beside you. You could get somebody reading the textbook with you and then you get an auditory input there as well as a visual and a kinesthetic. And also it's reflective because if you saw there, I had to think where those insertions were so it's enough for you to know oh they're under the scapula because it's not obvious that it's under the scapula at all because obviously you've got trapezius on the top there so there's a lot going on where the points of the tree are so well worth getting your hands on in this way when you're learning and recalling anatomy or taking your anatomy to that other level of saddle fitting and also putting a rider on. So do try and do that. If not for all of the body, at least do it for the saddle region and the bridle. So here goes along here. And where does it attach? The pelvis. The pelvis, yeah. Pelvis? Yeah. Does it attach to the pelvis? Is it underneath? Yeah. And I'm sure most of you will know this. <laughs> the anatomy textbooks are notorious for being misleading and what you see in one textbook you may not see in another and also even if you pick up a dissection textbook because of the way we're put together okay we're fundamentally the same the horses are fundamentally the same but muscle development means that especially with equine muscles they can come in very in thickness from a centimeter if that right up to 10 centimeters so until you actually get your hands on and start questioning and questioning the textbooks it's not enough to learn from a textbook at all so it inserts into the gluteal fascia or in this the region of the gluteal fascia check later if it does actually uh, attack no matter what you think you know when you look again you think, oh, I wonder. Okay, so we'll check that a month later, I, I went off to the Netherlands for an absolutely amazing dissection and they dissected the horse standing up. So it was propped up. It wasn't lying down on a table. And this is Dr. Anne-Marie van Gelder. I like my dissections performed by veterinarians and Dr. van Gelder is very special because she has a saddle fitting qualification. She's a veterinarian. She's a equine chiropractor, and she's also equine and human physiotherapist. So she's got the full suite of qualifications there. And I was very careful to watch what happened when longissimus was being exposed. 
So this is Ilio costalis here and longissimus. This is longissimus. But very interestingly, yes, it does blend with the gluteal tongue, but it actually the fibers originate from the sacrum and they almost branch out in a V, although it does extend to here, to the tubercoxa, tubercoxa. But it does something very interesting. There's, it's like a suspension bridge going on with longissimus dorsi. And you can see it tucks under latissimus here too. So it's not what the textbooks or the drawings in the textbooks will show it as just a strap of muscle here to here, but it's not, it's not. It has, it's got almost cords stringing it from the pelvis. So this is another view of it. So here, gluteal muscle group, iliocostalis, the muscle I keep harping on about, and longissimus. It's quite a complex pattern. And you can see the strands of latissimus, so the tendons of latissimus dorsi here. So you can see latissimus is quite a complex structure. It is almost suspended from the pelvis. It's all connected, but it's, it's multi-directional there. So we'll move on. Here we have the transverse processes of the lumbar, and this is the ilium. So I'm standing on the left side of the horse, and dorsal spinous processes would be here. There'd be some multifidus in there too, which on diagrams you think multifidus is not very substantial, but when it's dissected, you get almost like small pieces of steak extending from each dorsal spinous process or each vertebral body. So this would be the thickness of longissimus on this horse. It was well developed. Moving on. Here you can see even more clearly, this is the ribs and iliocostalis has been stripped away, but this is where it beds in. But what I want to show you here is the thickness of longissimus on this horse. So where it's perhaps level with the dorsal spinous processes, you can expect it, especially on a, a rounded horse, perhaps with a condition score of a three, that you can expect this muscle to be thick about 10 centimeters, maybe a little more. So it's not just a little strand of muscle at all that's only about a centimeter thick. It's not. This is muscle all the way down to the ribs. And you can see how when you palpate for the last rib, you're coming up the rib here, then your hand moves over muscle. You cannot feel the rib. It moves over the muscle and onto the thoracolumbar junction there. Any questions? Fascinated? Yeah, okay. So we'll move on. So, so we know now, because it, here to here, it has some connection between the thoracic limbs and the pelvic limbs. So we can think of that functionally. What, when it pulls, what will it do? When it contracts. It will hollow in. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Right. Yes, when that's when it's bilateral, when both are working. When one is working, it acts naturally. 
Okay. So we'll look at that uh, in more detail in movement and as we progress through the anatomy slides. Most muscles are paired, or certainly the locomotor muscles. So although our textbook will show longissimus as being on one side of the horse, it's also on the other. When one of that pair contracts, it will move the horse's body into lateral flexion. So think of this one having to relax and this one as the agonist and working and contracting, flex laterally. But when both muscles are recruited together, the horse will hollow. So two actions there. So think about, just keep that in mind, but we'll do it in more detail. Well spotted. Now find the other order. So the ribs emerge where the longissimus dorsi ends. So it ends here. Okay. No, sorry, who's that? How do you know where it ends? You can palpate the ribs. These are the ribs yeah. here. You cannot feel the ribs under longissimus. Right. So you will feel where the rib stops is where longissimus starts. Right, got it. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you can feel it all along here. Name another muscle that we were going to identify 